Good, let's check out the next classic strategic command. Yeah, World War II global conflict. Expanding the game to the entire globe. And you will be in command of all Axis and or Allied forces. It came with two expansion packs which are now included in your know, this gold editions, which you can purchase on Steam or GOG. If you look for the newer titles, check out my creator playlist for our strategic command, including the newest one, which is focusing on the American Civil War. Yeah, we will check out the main game. And then the two expansion picks, which probably come with new scenarios. <clears throat> Do some bit gameplay, it's not easy to show those games, because they come with a lot of units, especially the more recent ones. Runs fine on Windows 10. No issues here. Yeah, multiplayer, hot seat, email, direct IP connection as possible. Main module offers. Historical scenarios, but also some are historical like Germany and USSR unites in order to conquest the world. World at War, I guess, is the main thing. Uh, some fictional ones like the invasion of Britain. That is basically the turning point yeah, of uh, or both major turning points of World War II, yeah, Stalingrad and Midway. And yeah, there's also a third World War scenario, I guess, that is basically fictional that World War II is immediately evolving into a East versus West global war. And there's uh, some alternate maps. Uh, let's check out World at War, I guess that is the main thing. Now again, you can use 3D units or counters, like in all SC games. Okay, yeah, the scale is somewhat back to SC World War II. I was now thinking we'll play on a super huge map. But it seems like uh, countries are represented with a, with a couple of hexes, which I personally prefer. Um, some of the games, like for example the classic World War I, was played on a quite huge map with probably as a bigger force amount. And the newer titles might also come with bigger maps, but this here looks pretty good. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, and you might be in command either of the yeah, entire Western Allies and probably also what is basically tied somewhat to them, like China. Or the Axis forces. Yeah. My command German aggressive plans and Japanese aggressive plans. Some nations might be AI driven, like I think uh, Dutch. But it also depends on your diplomacy, as yes, you can pull nations to your effort. Good, yeah. It is, as I mentioned, it's somewhat difficult to show those games. Yeah, there's a lot of units to move around. Uh, might do one turn or whatever, and that's that's it. Well, first, I will show you the interface. It's basically, if you watched one of the other videos, even the modern titles, uh, they never changed the base formula. You still it plays like a patch general type of game. Uh, you move units around with a strength amount. They of course have somewhat more detailed values if you check that. Uh, like attack, yeah, what you know from Panzer General, but this game expand the tactical nature of Panzer General into something strategic. You're managing supply, you're managing here research, for example. Your main 
resource is MPP, which you can invest into purchasing units, into research, into diplomacy efforts in order to pull nations to your cause or prevent other nations from joining the enemy. Here, for example, we could invest into... Uh, currently, we don't have enough. Because we only have 118. We could invest into advanced subs. Let's do that. And yeah, now we're advancing here. And you handle those things for every nation. For example, now we have here Germany, Italy and Japan. Later on, perhaps some nations might join, like here the Eastern European ones, uh, Romania, etc. So you can't use, I don't know, German industry power in order to, I don't know, ramp up Italy or whatever that easily. I think you might invest into naval warfare. No, they might not. Uh, 65 MPP, there's not much uh, here. Japan. Aircraft, perhaps. Long range aircraft. Aerial warfare. Uh, currently not possible. Ah, it is possible. Okay. Good. Aerial warfare. Uh, invested somewhat. Okay. Production. Uh, you can produce and upgrade units. There's a. You know, can purchase HQ units, which might give further boosts to other units. Different infantry units and special purpose units. Yeah, air, land, sea, everything is available. Rather simplified, but sometimes can modify those units. For example, purchase a cruiser. They call it everything cruiser, but there's a mix. Uh, But you can get, give them further, you know, for example, anti-aircraft defense or anti-ASW capability by investing, upgrading them if you have uh, this available. And yeah, last is diplomacy, uh, similar to a Hearts of Iron, you can invest MPP in order, for example, to, I don't know, get ties to Argentina or perhaps pressure other nations from joining their allies in our case. Every nation is conducting on its own diplomacy. But you of course can somewhat yeah, um, ta uh, use tactics, yeah, like for example Japan approaches this nation, Germany approaches this state, nation, whatever. Good, uh, user manual, okay. Ah, this is not a hex game, it is a crit game, yeah, okay. I always called it hex game, yeah, but it is crit. Good. Yeah, again, <laughs> Poland, okay. Also should pick something else, because we already invaded basic Poland in... Above that's two starting about then. Which will also show you somewhat the scale this game can reach. Yes, yeah. I mean, 42 force amount, we are not that high. People sometimes believe the longer the war took, the lesser units, for example, Axis had. That is not entirely true. Uh, forces were ramping up. Up to 44, but um, simply one faction, yeah, allied faction, simply outproduced, out. Axis. Or we might play the third world war. What is Asia doing during that time? Let's see, uh, that is somewhat interesting. Uh, uh, what is how, is, how is Asia looking, how is Japan looking? Ah, China is now here, okay. So it will be China, Soviet Union versus the Allies, okay, uh, that makes sense. And the Allies are now sitting in Japan. Okay, let's see that. Might be a lot of units, but yeah, I might try to play one turn, somewhat semi-proficient. So it's 48, yeah, and World War II immediately 
evolved into World War Three between communism and Western. Let's see what is going on here in Asia. Who are those guys? That's our guys. Okay. What's going on in Japan? Nothing. Oh. Those guys. Nationalist China. Okay, that is. This is our first target here. Good. Research. I need good aircraft. And tanks. And the Soviet Union and China also needs good tanks. Next time. Yeah, that is a unit amount, yeah. Every icon is representing a unit. It's okay, but definitely takes time, yeah, per turn to move that stuff. I think in the newer ones you can set certain nations of your faction to AI, if I remember correctly, which is great if you, for example, only want to play the Soviet Union and leave uh, China to AI control. Here I don't know if that is possible. Might be a at least an obvious option for that. Yeah, China is still engaged here in a nationalist versus communist struggle. Can the Soviets assist? Yeah, what is that handled? Can you, do we need to basically get diplomacy done with each other? Probably. Wait, here. Let's say China want to approach the Soviet Union. Is that possible? Hmm. Doesn't look like. It's hard coded so that you can't enter in order to assist them. So let's you could together attack and Destroy the enemy very easy. Easier. But do we have any aircraft here nearby? Doesn't look like. Yeah, but we will take higher casualties than them. We have some RD unit here which can attack but with little chance to cause any damage. They are sitting on something here, what is it? River City Army, okay, they are in a city here. We can't bypass them. Oh yeah, there's a unit behind me, didn't see those guys, but yeah, of course, good damage. Yeah, good initiative here. The fifth Army, that is fine. Now we can finish them. Good, and we can pass those mountains. Yes, here's somewhat. Oh, uh, this Peking. Uh, we need also to drive towards Peking. Here in the south doesn't look that good. Army HQ come down here.
Muss also quite strong here. What is that here? Ah, that is a core. Do we have an army here? We have an army. Uh, that core uh, is quite weak. That is also core. That is an army. Yeah, three guys, one guy. Those guys mark defense on peaking. Yeah, there's a lot of river crossings here, and most of those positions uh, quite difficult terrain. And those river crossings really make it hard. What is going on here in Japan? Who is owning it? Allies. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, we already at war with everybody. Okay, I'll shoot them down. Airborne. <laughs> no, we could. No, we can't because we are not at the airport, I guess. Prepare, what is prepare? Is that preparing for an airborne jump? Good, yeah, okay, that is here for the Asian theater. Let's see what we can do here in Europe. These are our tank armies. Well, first, let submarines and aircraft act. What? But we can cross here, right? No, wait. Should we Copenhagen needs to fall? I need you. We can't escape the Baltic Sea or what?
Okay, so but Yeah, that will be a meat grinder. Okay, well, it doesn't seem that there is a... I mean, in the north, uh, we might achieve breakthrough at Hamburg next turn. Might focus all our air effort there. But they probably will resupply it and bring up reinforcements. Could, of course, declare war on... He was like, come on, it's 50%, what is this guy saying about us? Oh, and they're already on our side, come on, it's USSR. Because they are. But they're not on our side, not really completely. Uh, can't enter their territory. So any other assets we have? Yeah, we have something here. Oh, look at this uh, entire fleet sitting here. Ready to roll in the Atlantic. Yeah, first let's disrupt those supply lines. North Atlantic. A bit dangerous, but let's start with North Atlantic and then perhaps work our way to the French coast. But I think the unit amount is pretty good, yeah, I was thinking, of, I don't know, I think the newer games, the newer, there's a newer game which is also on global scale. Okay, Finland, can we declare war? <laughs> worked out perfectly last time, let's declare war in Finland. And, um, yeah, but I think the unit amount is fine. Um, once you have an idea where your forces are, you can play those turns at least somewhat in a somewhat acceptable, at least for me, acceptable time amount. What is it? Roughly 50 units or what? I don't know, that was just a guesstimate. 
Okay, two subs. Uh, there's still a lot of stuff in Russia. Oh, Jimmy. But yeah, it is not that easy because you can't stack units together. There is little square amount. So having a lot of units at the front lines is not even that helpful. As we throw millions of units there. If you can't deploy them properly, and you see that it's super crowded here. Is it okay for the aircraft? Can that aircraft land here? Uh, I mean, there's no air ports represented, is that correct? So I guess air units can be stationed everywhere. It's okay, let me leave, or otherwise I declare war on you. Afghanistan. Actually, that is allies. We need, of course, also here's. We also need southern front lines here. Yeah, that is also important. Yeah? You need to fight also for those Middle Eastern territories. So everything here neutral. Uh, that, okay, but here, for example, Iran. Baghdad, uh, Iraq. Everything here allies. Yeah? And that needs to be. Uh, how you say it? Liberated, yeah, by peaceful penetration. Good. Yeah, but I like it. I like really. The, I was first thinking that game will be, yeah, at least in my perspective, the worst from the unit amount and map size. But it looks quite interesting. Can replay really that. Make some progress in a single evening without spending your entire free evening time and to get a one turn done. Well, that will be a meat grinder. I wonder what is even more important here, throwing units to that front line or investing extremely into tech in order to get some good weapons. So basically we'll replenish like crazy, yeah? Refit, replenish. So Europe is simply too small for those units here. Yeah? yeah, and some now and then might say, ah, Jimmy, I need more squares. Yeah. <laughs> but I even like that. It's can't simply, it's not always in reality possible to throw forces into the front lines, simply throw quantity at the, at the front lines and problem solved. Yeah, this, as you see in a lot of recent example, examples, it's not only about that, but you need to properly deploy them, coordinate them. Good, yeah, should give you an idea. It's basically somewhat more resembling World War II from the scale. But this time is a global map. Uh, if you want, uh, and I perfectly understand that, if you want Pacific and Eastern Front split, I mean, we are not done with the video. It was, uh, we still have two expansion packs to roll. I just want to check what it says. Yeah, okay. Good. Let's see what those. Two expansion packs offer. Assault on communism. Sounds like Eastern Front. Let's check that out.
I could find it. Uh, I have two options. So good. Yeah, here, what is going on here with assault and communism? Yeah, that is focusing on Eastern Front. Barbarossa to Berlin, yeah. And that extended map. And smaller map. That is nice, yeah. So everybody's happy. Yeah? Smaller map, bigger map. Let's first check out the bigger one. Yeah, okay. Not absolutely crazy in the force amount. But yeah, Barbarossa was, of course, not the biggest unit amount. Uh, the Eastern Front yeah, will grow larger and larger. Uh, 42 and 43, 44. So, there's definitely quite some units here. Yeah, core level. And yeah, you could also play it with, in case I didn't showcase it, with counters uh, like all others. Good, okay, and the smaller map. Yes, I guess on army level. Okay. The first glance doesn't look even that smaller. It's still core level. And what was now different? Yeah, probably <coughs> extended map. Perhaps I didn't check. Perhaps the map is extended to the. I don't know. Check it out. You have the video if the scale is bigger or if it is somewhat bigger in, I don't know, in certain directions. But it's a core level action. Right? With a lot of units. So yeah, um, basically why the main game goes global. The both expansions seem to again focus, but with more detail than for World War Two, for example, the first title of the classic series, I guess, on certain front lines with quite a higher unit amount. I mean, I can show you how this might look later, during 43 or 44. And case blue it was already quite big. A citadel that is basically Kursk. Yeah. It was even bigger then. Yeah, but Gratian, I think that was the. That was before the destruction of army. Then what it was going south somewhat for the Germans uh, because they lost a lot of huge elements. But up to 44, those fr fronts grew and grew. So I mean, one grew bigger than the other. Yeah, okay. You can already tell that this is coming quite with a lot of units here. Yeah. That is this front outtake here. And <laughs> see the amount of units, there's already 50, 60 units here on the map. There's only this outtake here. 
So yeah, um, if you want, uh, what is that? Should we the Russians have many? Uh, Soviets have one hundred, Germans fifty. I don't know. Yeah, but it's okay if you look for that. That is your expansion pack here, which is included, anyways. So if you want to the biggest World War II package, yeah, this global war might be it. Yeah, now sorry on democracy is I guess the counterpart for the Western Front. Ah no, it is um Pacific. Mm -hmm. Well, not entirely, right? I think those are the additional scenarios. It is a mix. But it is Africa, Pacific, um, some fictional UK, liberation, and America defending against invasion. So basically, yeah, that is a nice scenario. I, I, I mean, sure, it was sometimes depicted in media. Yeah, there's a television series about that. I mean, the chance was not even that low yeah, that something like this might have happened. I mean, conquering entire Asia, probably not. Uh, Japan was never in a position to, to get America out of play. Uh, they never had this. At, they just wanted to buy time. Yeah. But they would have never, I don't know, conquered the entire Pacific and endangering American soil. Yeah, that was out of question. But here, basically, that's what happens. Uh, Europe, Europe, of course, could have fallen. Yeah, that is, was not even that far away. If Soviet Union would have fallen, Europe would have fallen. Yeah. And Great Britain would stand alone there. Uh, Pacific not. Yeah, of course, Japan, if they would have occupied enough. I mean, nobody had the American bomb back in the days on the in their plans and for example midway would have turned out different which was not even that unlikely and then it would of course enable them to maintain operational initiative and conquer and all those islands there for the giant awakes fully and outproduce them but here basically whatever went everything went absolutely wrong and I want to see that. But so yeah, this expansion pack simply gives you some exotic scenarios from all front lines. And so it is not focusing on the Western Front. Almost there's almost nothing in that regard. Invasion of America, uh, like probably the most difficult endeavor. You're already coming. Yeah, that might be probably the most difficult endeavor you can even pull off in modern warfare, trying to invade Northern America. Allowing a possible invasion of Japani Japan mainland would already blown out D-Day out of sky when it comes to proportions, which never happened. But invading America, that would be crazy. Yeah? Despite being an interesting game and movie idea, the logistics, everything required for that. Pull that off, that would be nuts. Yeah. Back in the days and nowadays, even. Only Yuri can pull that off, yeah. Yuri from Red Alert 2. Yeah. This is mind control technology. Yuri might pull it off. Good, but there is a scenario here which is great, yeah. so you can defend America from. Oh, that's already what I said. 
somebody dropped nuke, nukes on us. So nuclear uh, technology is a thing. Is that facilities or what is that? That they already dropped nukes on us. What is it? I guess that is um, for the town, probably. Let's see what is it? You know, perhaps there's some nuke protection or somebody got nuked. <laughs> But yeah, um, now you need to defend the US mainland. So yeah, there's quite a colorful mix of scenarios available with those expansions, included expansions. Really like the main game because of its smaller scale. Seems to be fun to play that even on global scale. If you indeed want a bigger scale, check the modern titles. I think there's also a global war modern title, which probably might have a bigger map, more units which I already showcased years ago. And yeah, that is those classic titles. Yeah, they often go on sale. I even like the visuals of those. Uh, it's timeless. And yeah, that's it. That was the classic series. We now have everything covered here. And see you in the next episode. Good hunting.